What's up, everybody? Um, happy Tuesday. Hope all of you're having a great day so far. Uh, oh, if any of you have a Vine, follow me on Vine at Davon Brock. Follow me on Vine. Um, Vine, I like Vine. Um, you should definitely follow follow uh, Kristen uh, Alderson and Chad Duell and Eddie Alderson. Um, their vines are hilarious as fuck. I love their vines. They're especially Chad Duell and Kristen Alderson. Their vines are hilarious. So, um, okay, let me get down to business with this episode today because I really did. I actually enjoyed today's episode. Um. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would enjoy it. I actually enjoyed it. Um, it was crazy. I love when they throw parties like bachelor party. Remember Connie's bachelorette party last year? Um, that bachelorette party was so crazy. You know, the whole magic Milo, the whole crazy. Um, I love when they throw parties and, you know, they do the karaoke. It's, it's always a good time, you know, for the most part. It's always a good time. And I just loved it because there was no 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 crazy type drama. You know, there was a little drama, but it was only towards the end. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't really during. So that was the good part. And you know what I noticed? Whenever they have parties like this, Carly and Sonny are not there. That's the crazy part. Carly and Sonny are never really at these parties. I guess because they they don't really go to these parties because you know the spotlight always go on them. So but anyway, let me get into this. Oh my God, I'm, I just noticed, I, I just spent like a minute rambling about this. But anyway, I just got party fever. I don't know what it is. Um. So anyway, the party was cool. So everybody was at the party. Um, Sabrina, uh, Felix, Duke, Anna, Lulu, Dante, Maxi. Um, so... Before I get to the party stuff, um, Kevin and Lucy were at the hospital. You know, they arguing or whatever because Lucy's pissed that they were late for the party. And, you know, Kevin might not be able to make it for the party because of his patience. Lucy's getting sick and tired of his patience always, you know, coming before her. And she was mad because they weren't um, Mac and Felicia's best man and matron of honor because she feels like they dropped the ball or they feel like Mac and Felicia feel like they can't trust or can't count on Lucy and Kevin or whatever as best man and matron of honor. That's why they, she feels they didn't get picked. Um, You know, it is what it is, but she's trying to blame all that on Kevin because of his work schedule. It's not all on Kevin. Like Kevin said, maybe they were, you know, afraid that you might stab a vampire with a stake on your way down the aisle. Right. You can't blame all of it on Kevin. They didn't pick you all for a reason, you know, that we don't know why they didn't pick you all but they didn't pick you. Um, Get over it. So they arguing in the elevator. She telling him, you know, are you coming to the party with me or not? He was like, if you so mad, he was like, why don't you just leave without me? She told me, oh, that would have been rude. And what the fuck was Lucy Cole wearing? I hate, why does she always wear these bedazzled outfits all the time? <laughs> Her style is just crazy. Like she liked to be flashy. I noticed that about Lucy. She has a bubbly personality. Like she loves to be flashy and likes to be seen. That's why she wear outfits like that. She loves to be the center of attention, even at somebody else's event. Um, so anyway, everybody at the party, um, Maxi sings or whatever. I like the song Maxi did. So, um, Dr. Obrecht is sitting her little, like I said yesterday, broke down fake ass Tammy Baker sitting at the fucking bar with that nasty wig on looking like it make, make her itch. Ugh, sitting at the bar with her poison in her hand. Duke and Anna sat their champagne down and she sat there and poisoned it. Poisoned one of the champagnes that I think it was Anna's champagne. So Anna and Duke get on stage and they're proposing a toast to Mac and Felicia and stuff, you know, and Maxie and 
Um, so they propose a toast. And here come Kevin and Lucy up in here making a spectacle, arguing in front of everybody at the party, just ruining the party. So Maxie was a little, you know, annoyed and stuff like that because she felt they tell, you know, Lucy takes the spotlight away from the bride and the groom. So Dante and Lulu get on stage with a tired ass with some whack ass. You're having my baby type song. Oh, get the fuck out of here with that. That song was so dreadful. And they I'm like, even y'all music is boring and them stupid faces Dante was making. I'm like, get them all stage. I would have been at that damn party like, boo, I want my money back, even though I ain't paid to get up in here. But still, I want a refund. They were just aggravating. Like, get the fuck off stage. Ain't nobody here for y'all. I'm not here for them. Ain't nobody trying to watch y'all sit on stage and talk about how Maxi y'all baby mama or whatever she having y'all baby. Y'all sound tacky and dreadful. Get off stage. Bump. Goodbye. Anyway, that was an epic fail on Dante and Lulu's part. So, Dr. Obrecht sitting at the bar waiting for Anna to just drink the liquor. Lucy is irritated by Kevin or whatever. Um, Ellie and Spinelli start talking about how Ellie's a little jealous because she feel Maxie and Spinelli do a lot of, you know, they got a lot of special moments like karaoke is one of their special moments. Remember, they did karaoke and stuff at their non wedding at the floating rib. Well, when it was called Jake's and that was when Carly was uh, pregnant with Jocelyn and stuff. That was happier times. Um, so Ellie's a little jealous about it. She's jealous about everything that Maxie and Spinelli share. Like, bitch, get over it. They have a long history long before you came on the show. So get the fuck over it. Whatever. Why don't you do the smart thing? Like Spinelli said, and create some moments with each other. She told me, oh, but I can't sing. So what? He likes you for other things it ain't about the karaoke and stuff that's his special thing with maxi why don't you create a special thing for just you and spinelli and shut the fuck up which is jealous of i can't stand it so sabrina's sitting around obsessing over patrick wondering where he at she called his phone or whatever he ain't picking up and now they got a suspicion that brit is the reason why he was kept up like seriously sabrina go somewhere that's his alleged fake baby mama so He's with his baby mama, his fake baby mama, but he don't know that. So she decides to go to the hospital because she's sick of waiting. So she goes to the hospital, um, searching the room. Well, before she got to the room, Patrick and Sabrina, I mean, Patrick and Britt were talking. Britt was about to tell Patrick about the, my guess is the paternity of the baby when she started feeling pains in her stomach. She started feeling pains and shit like that. So she thought something was wrong with the baby. So they left the room to go to an OR to go to the other room, to the exam room. So Sabrina comes into one of the, the Lamaze classroom or whatever, looking for Patrick. She don't find him, but she found his cell phone. And that, now she knows why he didn't answer the phone because he doesn't have it. So Patrick was in the room with Britt and stuff, and he was doing a sonogram and stuff, trying to see if the baby was OK. And they found out that the baby was a boy. Um. There's a rumor, I don't know if I said this, but the rumor, you know how everybody think that that baby is Dante and Lulu baby? The rumor is the baby is Lulu's baby, but the baby ain't Dante's baby. Apparently, Dante's not the father, but Lulu is the mother. Apparently, the sperm that they used, that Dr. Obrecht and Britt used, is from Stefan, not Stefan, um, what's his name? Um fuck is his name stavros damn i'm forgetting people names now stavros cast it on apparently it was stavros who's the biological father of that baby and lulu's the biological mother but dante's not the father that's the rumor i ain't saying it's true i ain't saying it's a spoiler it's a rumor that's all i'm saying we're not gonna know nothing until they talk about it but um anyway back to business they're having a boy um and he asked Britt, what was it that she had to tell him? She told him that she was lying about having an abortion and, 
you know, he was upset about that. She did it just to get him to stop her so she could get closer to him. Then she lied about her illness so that way she could move in with him. And Patrick, you know, felt like since she's being honest, is there anything she need else she need to tell him? He was hoping that she would have told him he wasn't the father, but she maintained that lie. Um, so she maintained that lie and he told her he has to be able to trust her so that way they could co-parent together and stuff like that because he's trying to make the co-parenting situation easier, which I get. Um, even though he ain't the daddy, but <laughs> I digress. Um, so they hug or whatever. And Sabrina come waltzing her ass in there with attitude as she see them hugging, but she obviously don't know why they're hugging. And like Patrick told her, you know, he lost track of the time about the party and stuff. So they leave and Britt says she's sorry. And now Britt feels like now her mother's plan is actually working. So I like Britt because Britt is, uh, you know, she's not a one dimensional character. She has layers to her. She could be good and kind hearted, but she could also be an evil bitch. I feel like she need to step up her game as far as plotting and being a schemer because I feel like she could be a long term character in the show. Like she could be real good with Nicholas. But if somebody ever cross her, she can plot and scheme to take them down. But she needs to learn how to be a better plotter because her whole plan just crumbled. Like so she just needs to focus on that. So anyway, back at the party, Lucy is infuriated with Kevin. So. She goes over to Felix and talks to him. He tries to pet her here. She told him not to touch the hair. Um, so Kevin is talking to Mac and Felicia saying how Lucy's always upset with him. And, you know, he, he doesn't know how to make her smile anymore. So Mac comes up with an idea. So they go running off. Um, Duke takes a sip of champagne, you know, while Dr. Obrecht is sitting on stage singing that depressing ass song, looking like a crazy bitch with that itchy wig, with that itchy wig on. Um, look like she need to go take a flea bath. So Anna and Duke are sitting there drinking the champagne and stuff. You know, they had toasted earlier and said that they wish that Robert could have been at the wedding and, you know, but he's going to be in their hearts and, you know, which I felt like was a touching thing to say um so duke started to feel ill and he leaves you know to go outside to get some ear so mac and uh kevin get on stage and drag so now they're posing as drag queens and start singing a song and stuff for felicia and uh lucy co that whole segment had me on the floor i was dead when i seen him in drag i was like oh my god that whole performance was hilarious dante looked like he was enjoying it a little bit too much with that he was smiling like a damn cheshire cat damn freak lulu better keep an eye on her man i'm just saying because he was a little bit too excited um um so everybody was enjoying themselves. i love the performance that mac and um kevin did that was a cool performance funny like i love that's why i love parties on general hospital especially the karaoke is is hilarious to me you know, especially when it ain't all that drama. So Lucy notices Dr. Obrecht, but she don't remember where she's seen her from. And then she remembered that she's seen her in a park and she was saying some strange shit to her. So she decides to go and tell Anna. So she goes tell Anna. I think um, Dr. Obrecht started feeling like they were watching her or something like that. So before Anna could see her, she dipped out the door. So she bumped into to, uh Duke and Duke recognized her as Dr. Obrecht. He recognized her and grabbed her, but he collapsed because, you know, he drunk the poison. So he so she noticed that he drunk the poison that was meant for Anna. She was pissed because Anna fucked up her plans. So she ran off. Duke is unconscious. Dante bumps into Anna and was wondering where Duke was because he surprised Duke would miss that performance that Mac and Kevin did. So Anna was wondering. She went out to go check on Duke. And found him unconscious on the ground. I heard Duke was supposed to slip into a coma, which is fucked up. I think he's going to slip into a coma before he could tell Anna about Dr. Obrecht. All these comas. Like, what is with these shows in a coma? God. 
But anyway, am I missing about talking about somebody? I don't think I am. But anyway, today's episode was good. It felt like it was like more focused on two scenes because today's show focused on the party and it focused on the hospital. That was it. So I'm glad that it didn't go into, you know, different areas today. It was just a one dimensional show today, which I'm happy because I am so sick of seeing like a billion characters on this show in different scenes with different people, like instead of, you know, in one spot in one episode. I like I like that better. You know, it makes it easier to, you know, talk about Tomorrow, we got to look at Ava Jerome. I'm so irritated with that bitch. I'm not even looking forward to tomorrow. Um, So anyway, today's episode, like I said, was pretty good. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I love parties. Um, So anyway, I'll see all of you tomorrow. Have a great day. See you later.